than do that. <laughs> Glad no one was like, no, nah, man, we should go in there. I mean, like, even if we did, the things would be like, you're suicidal, bye. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we should have tried to talk to the, the little kid with the bags. I, I don't think that talking really works. I have a feeling... If any creature we've seen so far has been sentient, it'd be that one. Can I just point out, because this is the first time we've had a little bit of a side break, sure. I so emotionally connect with Brenda. <laughs> like, uh, that's me when I'm feeling depressed and just need to Brenda? Oh. I love that meme so much. <laughs> Wait, me just want the goat? Yeah, just Brenda. <laughs> tell you, man, memes, memes have stepped their game up. Like they're getting better as time goes on. Mm -hmm. That's what you think. In reality, the Picabe ain't trash. I don't know, man. I mean. I I think whenever things get better, they also get worse. Yeah, it's like the whole, like, duration thing. So it's like, Twitter, right now, I enjoy a lot more than I did in the past, but also, I hate it with much deeper passion. <laughs> yeah, let's see that. I say, as I'm currently scrolling through Twitter. And plus, anytime things get better, the things that were even, like, mediocre before, you're just like... Dang, he's having, like, a full real on conversation. Having a chit-chat. So what do you think's happening? Nothing, nothing important or anything. Just like, hey, no. why don't you come over to the wall and have a hangout? Nothing wall, important. Popsicle. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work out um, for someone who hates having voices in their head. Mmm, jump in the river. <laughs> God, who's next to Marshall? Okay, cool. Marshall has some wiggle room. He can go berserk. <laughs> Downside. Like, every one of us is at the back, and then there's just the secrets between us and Marshall. They're just gonna... Hmm. Well, that's gonna be fun to have to deal with. Oh yeah, we even outnumber him, kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're strategizing against yourself here. <sighs> so, anybody read a good book lately? Or? Understanding the principles of anatomy and physiology, I mean, edition is a, 15. Is that a good book, or a, I have to read this for my score book? Uh, mostly the latter, some of the former. Okay. At least it was slightly interesting. Mm, cookies. I really, I really want to use the bathroom. But I know for a fact the second I leave is the second crash is going to pull me in. Be like, hello, yeah, welcome to the madness. And it's like, wait, where's the Garth? <laughs> you can just go just next. Type BRB. Uh, nah, it's fine. The last thing you want to do is, like, be a. Nip. 
I really want to use the Kiritar because, you know, it's a tool that was given to us, but at the same time, it's kind of more valuable on us than it is on some random schmuck that probably won't make it out of the city. Because I have to get through yeah, all the probably, districts. If we see, like, a high priest or priestess, like, yeah, that's a good, that's a good use. If we see, like, some other, like, alchemist that probably knows some stuff about Aiden, that's probably a good use. But some bucket-headed little kid? Nah. No. But I want to help people. <laughs> Wait, can we use all of the cures through the cure top? Uh, I think we can. I think it's set up just to take, like, Connor's style syringes, which is what we have. Hi. Oh, hi. Middle of the hi. conversation. I, I told you guys to be ready for a sudden drop. <laughs> I, I literally heard the music stop. I was like about to say, "What's going on?" Then I hear you say hi, and it's like, mm, "Neat, ah, cool." Of course. So, ah, how's it going? It's going all right. It's going all right. Let's talk about the voices in your head. <laughs> Which ones? The more relevant ones. Hmm. The voices you, Chetamir, hear. Our voices you haven't heard in a very long time. In fact, you almost sort of forgot them, didn't you? I'm talking about the three people you went to the Fey Wilds with. Mm -hmm. And you also hear a lot of fucking buzzing. It's a constant drone for Chenomir. Not like you duck, dunked your head in a wasp hive or anything, but it's like it's like hearing war drums in the distance. It's just sort of just constant drone, hat drone, and you don't hear like you hear the occasional scream of pain or grunt or whatever here and there, Katieva in them, but. The thing you hear across this uh, trek across a uh, riverbank, it's like you're hearing them inside a lab maze or something. They keep s shouting at each other. Different directions, ways. No, this is the way. Oh my goodness, I think I found it. I found the way out. And then every time, there's going to be a no or shit. Fuck. No, 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 this isn't it. Oh, gods, no. Just... Rising hope of escape met with crushing reality that they have found just another dead end. It's quite... quite... how to say... It's very cathartic. How does Chenomir respond? They're right on the other side of the wall. Point of these sounds. Hmm. Her interaction in the past with hearing voices. I'm mainly thinking things like the fullets, but I imagine she's probably had those occur occasionally, rarely, but occasionally in North yeah. things. Another catch is that a full let's laugh isn't necessarily. It's very general. Like, it might sound happy, like, Laura and stuff, but it didn't necessarily sound exactly. Hmm. Versus the voices you hear now, there are 100% voices that are fallen companions. It just wouldn't make sense that they were here. If this was contrived by Hildwin, because he know he's one of the enemies that knows she is connected to the Feywilds, 
and this is something where they had more than two weeks to think ahead and try to find these fuckers, then she might think that it could be them. But, like, even with how real it sounds, some part of her head that's the reasoning part says that it's probably not real. And then there's a part of her head that also says... But what if it is? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know that feel. <laughs> it's up to you to decide how she reacts. No saves or anything I've, I force upon you guys. Or have I? <laughs> I think, honestly, I have the idea of running in my head that she just... <laughs> bashes her head on her shield real quick. And just be like, use pain, focus on what's going on. If you want. I don't want to, like, fucking startle people, though. <laughs> it's like... No, no, you could just keep it as simple as biting your tongue or the inside of your lip. That's what I do in real life. Yeah, but... <laughs> I would, except for, like, that feels like something, like, she would be more conscientious of her outward appearance to other people. She has eight charisma. She is not that conscientious of that. She doesn't care. She goes with whatever Well, if you bite the inside of your cheek, that's not something people see. Yeah. And trust me when I say it hurts like hell. Yeah. I notice I do this a bit is that I more like kind of purse both my lips inward. So I think that's what she does. Because like you purse them far enough that you can actually like bite on them then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think she'd go I've with I've done that. Like that. And probably like okay. rub the side of her head a bit. <laughs> Trying desperately okay. to focus. Fine. Time to send you back, man. Mm. Anyway. Garth Bye. returneth. Hmm. Garth, now gonna use the bathroom. Be right back. Bye. Are you anxious, Taryn? You know, <laughs> I'm. Ambivalent. That's my. <laughs> I ain't unfair. I mean, what do you think like, you'll hear? You know, I honestly do not know. <laughs> Very in the dark room. Hmm. Hmm. I always get the impression that Seema is kind of like the character who externally at the very least keeps her cool and in, yeah. and maybe internally it's like fuck 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 <laughs> I think that Seema is um, the old police officer who it's her day before retirement every single time we have a campaign and is just constantly like I'm too old for this shit like yeah yeah you're so... My lizard is so lazy. I put a blanket in his little habitat, and he's just like laying no. on it all day. No, oh, little buddy. Yeah. Is he a beardy? Yes. Oh. His name is Bahamut, because he's a bearded dragon. Beautiful. Very appropriate. <laughs> My, uh, um, I have a really good friend who has a bearded dragon, and his name is um, Yirara. As in the Japanese name for Godzilla. Godzilla. Oh my gosh. Ooh, nice. That's wonderful. Also very appropriate. Anyway. I don't know. If I had a pet, like a cat, I'd probably just name it cat. I had or a, cat a dog cat. for dog. <laughs> what's what's Swedish for cat? Cat. Oh it's just okay. What about dog? Hund. Uh, Hund. Okay, it sounds like hound. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. H-U-N-D. Same as the Does German word. Wow. Yeah. So that a, was a lizard, though, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The word for lizard is la. <laughs> does that just translate straight into lizard, or does it translate to, like, some yeah. weird thing? Aww. No, uh, lizard. I was hoping it'd be, like, scaled dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> scaled dog. The Devil's Hound. I don't know. Uh, 
But yeah, I can't wait for uh, all this chat, and then Marshall just goes fucking berserk, because someone's talking in his head. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> he was mentioning that while you were gone. <laughs> ah, damn. <laughs> and we're all way back here, and all this is <laughs> Do I have... What do I have? Do oh, yep. I do have command ready. Calm the fuck down. So, yeah. I Hakuna Yatadas. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. So, if worse comes for worse, I can just cast command and, like, have him. But it does not last very long. Yeah. But I don't think but we like, need very long. Well, here's the problem. His whole thing is about mind control, and command is directly that. <laughs> so he might be a little pissed. And we did say we wouldn't do that kind of shit to him. I guess we did. Yeah. I love the I idea. think he got really... I think I did cast command on him. He got really to mad at me. Uh, on, the, on the bright side, we have a whole troop of seekers between us and him. <laughs> on the downside, we have a whole troop of seekers between us and him to calm him down. The, the idea I have is going up and just literally making, like, a wall between him and them so that, like, he could just go fucking ham. <laughs> like, we just yeah, all just give him a real big bear hug and are just, like... Last time someone tried to give him a bear hug, Kara's almost got knocked halfway across a room. <laughs> you know, I upped my strength last time we leveled up, so... What are you at? I now have... 54. Uh, 16 strength. Oh, that's level. perfectly respectable. Absolutely. What does 54 strength look like? <laughs> I mean, I have 20 wisdom right now. So like... You blast it full. 22. Uh, what was my score? 16. Because Chetamir is average plus, aside from charisma. Don't worry about that. No, all of mine, here's the thing, because I'm too lazy to like look at feats. I just have like I'm a little bit overbalanced right now. So I'm 16, 15, 16, 14, 20, 14. Nice. So like I am moderately good at many things. And very good at some others. Yes. Mm. My spread is 12, 15, 18, 15, 12, 20. Okay. Uh 16, 16, 15, 14, 16, 8. Yeah, average plus. Minus charisma. Because <laughs> I like charisma. Even if I had the option to boost charisma in some way, I might turn it down, honestly. Yeah, I think it's a good little... The, and the way you've been rolling in your have... fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only reason why I have charisma a little bit up is because... Starting set. Yeah, and also I... Um... That's one of my main saving throws as a cleric. Uh, oh yeah, makes sense. Checks, checks out. out. <laughs> Please don't banish the cleric. Yeah. It's like, we will I, stop you, you evilish- I deal with demons a little bit too much. <laughs> Gotta be able to talk nice to them. While stabbing them in the eyeballs. And also I think it fits that, like, Seema has a plus two in charisma, because it's like, she's real nice and, like, awesome and everything. Um, but, like, is not exceedingly good at, like, talking people into things. Yeah, no, yeah, there's definitely many sides to charisma. You don't have to be the smooth talker. Yeah. Just because you have a high charisma, for instance. It could be, you could justify it in many ways. You could be a, yeah. a, a, a gentle, nice person. You could be a super attractive uh, person. You could be a smooth talker. I mean, you can pl role play it any way you want. That's the nice part, yeah. I think. You could be honest to a fault. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons I like charisma is because it's it's a, it's a it's staff that you can, yeah, you can justify it in different ways. Yeah. Whereas strength, it's like, well, you're kind of ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom is also nice in that, in that sense. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's any experience can be anything really. True. Intelligence, I mean, to a degree. It's similar, but in a more specified vein. Intelligence, mm. you are mm. most likely being taught from something. 
like someone or some book or something like that as opposed to wisdom where it's like fucking you lived congratulations here's some wisdom uh yeah at least that's potentially i could entirely be wrong go right ahead so how dead are we oh oh hi i didn't see your turn disappear i forgot i have um a thing on Discord. It has a setting to detect if OBS is running. So if OBS is running, it just doesn't make any noises for me. Yeah, same. It's wonderful. When it is right. So, um... How, how bad is it? Be? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Scale of 1 to 10. Good. Mm. Well. Who, who's going in the river? Um... So... We'll probably discuss it when everyone gets back. But he definitely would have hit against the wall as hard as he could with his hammer. Oh, crap. You know, that's a very fascinating quirk you picked. It's, it's I like it. Because it's the kind of thing you don't really think will be a huge disadvantage, but in certain, especially in our group, in these circumstances, I mean, it makes for some very interesting oh shit moments. Yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely a flaw. <laughs> Is it literally written in your flaw, like, don't fuck with his head? <laughs> so, he has a deep-seated hatred of enchantment magic. Mm -hmm. Of what magic? Enchantment. Any sort of enchantment magic. Oh, interesting. Part is the reason for that. Part of the reason that it's like cheating. Uh, because mind control does uh, terrible things. Yeah, more so, it's just you are who you choose to be by the actions you choose, and when someone takes that away from you, that is the worst evil someone can do. Because it's not you anymore. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Well, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Like Force the friends and all that, and so checks out. Grim. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I haven't taken uh, more forcibly persuasive spells. Not martial specifically, but because there's there's a line in persuading or convincing someone with words and forcing them with magic. Yeah, definitely. Like, it is it is without a doubt the most evil school in my book. Like necromancy, you're moving someone's dead body. Enchantment, you're making them do it while they're still alive. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's a fair point. Imagine being controlled to kill your loved ones and you have to remember it. I would make a very good villain. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why I think Jessica Jones season one was so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, like yeah, it had yeah. Mm -hmm. did. It wasn't because she was great, it was because Kilgrave was a great enemy. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. I never saw season two. Uh, what's the, what's, she said, um, I think they could likened it to mind rape at one point, yeah? In a way, yeah. And there's most likely literal in there. Mm. Kilgrave is a mm -hmm. horrible, terrible monster of a person in the comics. Never in the comics. It's oh a yeah, he's a, he's a horrible person. Mm -hmm. But... But such a great villain. Yeah, no, I mean, horrible people make for great villains. Mm. And David Tennant, like, knocked it out of the fucking park with that. I mean, to be, I, I like him. I've liked him in a lot of things he's been in. Hmm. But not your favorite? Yeah, I, I mean, oh, I think he was great in it. I think he was... I think you, when you cast him, you're just going to get a uh, a great performance. 
Alrighty. Think you could think of someone that would be better for Kilgrave? Ooh, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's like a level of charisma that you can't really apprehend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Will Smith, it's, now. It's... I don't know, he pulls off the, the charisma with the intelligence uh -huh. mixed with the derangement very, very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. The madness like part he... pops in occasionally, not constantly. Like, a lot of the time it feels like this is the person you could just have a conversation with, depending on the conversation, and then occasionally it's just, oh yeah, I'm also gonna make you murder your loved one and grind them down a fucking uh, kitchen sink. Yeah, You can exactly. make the argument that the line between genius and mad genius is almost non-existent. Oh yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, look at, look at someone like Elon Musk. Like... <laughs> That dude is clearly a genius, but like, he's one step away from being a James Bond villain. <laughs> yeah. I invent a laser that harnesses the power of the sun, and none of you can see the sun anymore, so you have to pay me to have sun. <laughs> I mean, he did like, literally invent a flamethrower. He did invent a flamethrower just because he could. <laughs> and then sold him, so. Ah. But how does the flamethrower work? So, he specifically said he made a not flamethrower. Uh-huh. But it was totally flamethrower. But you can't sell flamethrowers. Uh-huh. But, but you could sell, like, a gas combustion uh, machine, like, which is, I, I guess, what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. But then you also see, like, he powered all of Australia for free because they didn't have power. <clears throat> you like... What is this guy? Then he smoked pot on TV and sort of had a weird breakdown. Yeah, and I think, and I mean, to be fair, it. I think he doesn't do great in, I don't think, interviews. Because you can definitely tell he's on the spectrum of autism. A scooch. Like, I think so most geniuses funny? are, Yeah. to be Hi fair. Hyper-intelligence sort of doesn't leave enough room for EQ. Yeah, a lot of social intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys seen the most recent Predator movie? No. Okay. No. Do you mind if I spoil parts of it? No. I watch reviews because I don't want to watch those movies. Exactly. So, one of the main things is that uh, the main character's uh, kid is autistic. Uh, I can't remember exactly what mm -hmm. it is, but he's autistic in some way. And Yeah, I think he's Asperger's. I believe so, from the little hints they had at the beginning. Anyways, uh, it almost completely fades away by the end of the movie. Like, there's no fucking change. Um, there's massive fucking change. Uh, but the thing is, they tried to sell off the Predators ripping out people's skulls as, like... Oh, they're collecting samples to improve themselves. And the autistic kid is an example of, like, super heightened human evolution. I'm just like... What? <laughs> what? In some ways, yes... Yeah, but, like, that's a terrible plot to yeah, the story. I get, I get what you're saying. It's a pretty yeah. bad plot. Yeah, it's like, but think about you're it trying like... to explain something that's just literally there for the cool factor of they ripped out a man's skull. Yeah. I mean, let's be real, like, horror, like, gore genre movies, like, mm -hmm. the plot is always paper thin. Yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. Paper thin and covered with water. Please don't blow on my uh, lo blow. Yeah, exactly. Please don't destroy my logic. It doesn't take much. You have what, to look at it wrong. What, what's that flower that has all the little uh, uh the little dandelion, little petals dandelion. that you can blow on? Yeah, yeah. little puff balls. It's like that's that's the plot. <laughs> and... Don't 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 ruffle my house of cards. <laughs> Which was another great show until it went all downhill. Never saw it. It was good. There's so many. It was shows. really good. It was honestly, it was so funny because the director or someone was interviewing Bill Clinton. And he was like, so I heard the show is loosely based off y'all. He's like, yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. I mean, the Clintons are pretty evil people just in general. Like there's, there's a list you can go on of like 63 people, I think, in counting that have been murdered by them. So. Oh. Dope. Yeah, they're they're pretty pretty like politics aside, they're horrible people. Nifty. Um, so this when is you, when you make is, the show. Okay. Oh no, go ahead. No, I, go ahead. Continue what you were saying. I was just gonna say. So when you make a show about House of Cards, it's based off evil politicians. Well, you have a perfect template. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Um, but yeah, don't take this as gospel, but it's kind of heard from friend, heard from friend. Uh, but I heard from my sister that her friend was working at like a party or something that he went to. And she was like less than 18, I believe. And he was actually like hitting on her. <laughs> Who, Kevin Spacey? No, no. Um, Hillary, uh, not Hillary Clinton. Bill Clinton. Oh, Bill Clinton? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I believe that. 100%. It's, it's like you're like old and she's not even of age. My dude. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't care if you're the ex-president. Uh, Go away. Yeah, yeah he's pretty creepy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Anyways. Man, God, we I have some interesting conversations. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. It makes sense that she would be the most attuned to what's happening. Mm. Yep. And there's an aspect of history people never think about or never touch upon unless they want to make something political. Uh, in terms of, you know, these dramas where they time travel? Uh, time travel always fucks it up. Yeah. During the Middle Ages, at least in Europe, you know, having a woman marry at the age of 14 was normal. Back. And and that yeah. is fucked up. But yeah, people... by 15, it's like, why aren't you pregnant? Yeah. Where are my five uh, children? You know... <laughs> yeah. I why mean, aren't well... you dead? And, <laughs> and a lot of them died in childbirth, you know? This is... People were forced to become adults by the time they. <laughs> to be fair, you know, they only lived to like teens. 30. I was just oh, saying. Well, some people live till 70s, but yeah. Yeah. a lot of people died from dental infections. Hmm. Yeah. You know, do you know who had really gross dental problems? Hmm. Uh, I think it's Louis XIV. Oh, you know what? I think I remember hearing about that. Yeah, because he was known to have like terrible, terrible breath. Exactly. <laughs> he had a, a a bad tooth that they pulled out, mm. but they, something went wrong. So when they pulled the tooth out, the sort of his uh, upper effect. what it was the inside of what's the inside of the mouth called in English? I forget. Uh, the soft palate. Palate. Yeah. yeah, the soft palate. It it caved. Ugh. So. For from that moment on, for the rest of his life, that that cavity filled with pus, which is what gave Aww. him his bad breath. So he had really cool. bad dental. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. just shoot me in the face. Oh wait, they don't have guns. <laughs> Stab me. I, I would assume that's what killed him because that probably rotted up to his brain. Uh, potentially. Fuck with your nerves. Because like the the soft palate will connect to the skull. Oh, actually, There's not much executed. there. Oh. Yeah, wasn't he like a huge piece of trash? Um, a lot of trash he in was. He was very bad at, or his court at the very least was very bad at managing France's finances. So he pretty much tanked France's economy. Ah, hello, my. Sup? Hope you're having fun. That was half an hour. Yeah, of madness. Again?